Good morning guys. We just got a mooring boy here in front of Lualu village. It's a tiny little village in the fjord here of Alor, close to Kalabahi. We've come here to film the Thresher Shark Conservation Group. This is a group uh, comprised of young Indonesian people who are, who are worried about the future of, of different marine species. So pretty awesome. Enjoy the video. Alor is a small group of islands in the southeastern part of Indonesia. You've got ocean on the north, ocean on the south, strong tidal currents going between them. This obviously affects the water clarity, but also the marine environment uh, is just, you know, amazing in these places. The divers who really want to see these sorts of things, they know about Alora and there are quite a few dive operations going here and quite a few liveaboard boats also visit the region. Part of the reason the marine environment is so impressive here is because of the upwellings. The water temperature can change 10 degrees in a short space of time. Thresher sharks are found worldwide. There are three or four different varieties. They live in deep water, they don't bite humans, and so because of that, we don't really know much about them. We do know that they live relatively short lifespans, they mature very late, and they only have two to three pups per year. Thresher sharks have a very long tail. It's actually as long as their whole body, can be several meters long, and they actually use this tail for fishing. They come towards their bait fish and then they turn around and sort of whack the water with their tails and this creates a shock wave and stuns or kills the small fish and then the thresher shark goes and feeds on them. They don't really have big teeth, they don't, you know, they're not aggressive sharks as such. Sports fishermen worldwide often catch the thresher shark by their tail and this is also how the local fishermen in the two villages in the law catch the thresher shark. They've made a lure that's very successful, it's a big hook with rooster feathers and other colourful feathers attached to it and they'll dangle that down and then they'll just yeah catch the tail of the thresher shark and pull them up. They do eat the meat but the main money comes from finning these sharks. So I'm Dewi from Thresher Shark Indonesia. 80% of the thresher shark that being catched by the fishermen in these two villages are female and then most of them are pregnant. So with this information we think Alor might be a critical habitat for the treasure shark because they are coming here uh, uh, during the, their pregnancy. Maybe there are uh, like a nursery ground here. Uh, with the research, we uh, we doing two uh, two method. We put the satellite tag and also acoustic tag to the treasure shark. Uh, what we do with these two uh, tag, uh, we want to know their movement and then which area that they visited during their time in in Alor. We started this project since 2018. Some of our friends told us that there is a, a village in Alor who catch the treasure shark. We found that uh, the fishermen here are actually catching treasure shark because it's easy for them to catch treasure shark because the location to catch the treasure shark is not really far away from their village. It just takes like uh, 15 minutes from them using a boat to, to catch the treasure shark. And then the price of the treasure shark uh, for them is actually uh, good also for feeding their family and, and to fulfill their basic need. So right now there are 36 fishermen who work together with us and they are already committed to stop uh, catching treasure shark and to use these uh, facilities uh, that we provide to catch uh, other type of fish for example tuna, grouper, snappers and others uh, valuable fish which not uh, harm the ecosystem. Invited to the handing over ceremony at these two villages. The fishermen publicly declared that they would no longer hunt the thresher shark. Also part of the ceremony were all the government organizations that were involved. So the police, the, the local council, the Ministry of Fisheries, the water police, the Navy, these sorts of things. And that also puts pressure on the fishermen to stick to their word because the public declared in front of all these people that they're gonna stop fishing the sharks. Then they were given title to the new tuna fishing boats. Beforehand they were actually given some training on this new fishing techniques. 
the new areas they would have to go to, uh, obviously further out to sea so they learned some safety, um, yeah obviously fishing techniques, how to use the new fishing gear they received and also sustainability like catch numbers, sizes to try and keep the fishery uh, sustainable for the future. As always in Indonesia there's a lot of talking, a lot of speeches but after all was said and done everyone went down to the pier where all the five boats have been gathered and uh, the government officials and the mayor and all these people were taken for a ride in the bay. It was all a bit of a symbolic gesture but everyone was happy and it sort of seemed like the start of a new life for these guys. One of the fishermen here on the beach is very, very enthusiastic and very thankful to the Thrasher Shark Foundation for providing him with a, a new livelihood and a one he could feel good about and a one he could teach his kids to be proud of. Right now in Kalabahi we have an office and four uh, full-time staff who work together with me. We never expect that we can reach this uh, point where, where we uh, are able to provide the facility for the fishermen to stop hunting the treasure shark and then uh, we got a positive response from them they are willing to stop uh, catching the treasure shark and also the government are so happy because we provide a concrete solution for their people not only asking them stopping treasure shark but also we have provide them the solutions we are hoping that the successfulness of our project can inspire more young Indonesian to involve in the conservation work because we have a beautiful nature that needs to be protected and we as young Indonesian need to take part on this so hopefully we all can do this in the same uh, patience and motivations to protect our nature well guys really hope you enjoyed that video we had a lot of fun making it um... Obviously it's not a lot of sailing or our personal adventures in there, but I thought it was a pretty interesting uh, subject to bring you guys, uh, to show you that these young Indonesian people are really trying to do things themselves to protect their country and their marine environment, and at the same time looking after their people, you know, providing the fishermen with an alternative uh, way of looking after their families, you know. So, so that was pretty cool. We were really impressed by all the people working at the... Thresher Shark Foundation and also how the fishermen, how the locals there reacted to them, you know, like they, once they had the information that the Thresher Sharks are very threatened, they were, um, you know, willing to change their ways and, you know, traditions and the way people have done things forever, generally that's really hard to change that. So it was quite impressive to see that they were open to that and, uh, you know that they went along with it and they signed in front of all these people so good stuff to Thresher Shark you guys are awesome you guys helped us out a lot uh, obviously we weren't there personally for the tagging part of the whole project so thanks to the Thresher Shark Foundation for providing us with the underwater footage of the sharks otherwise it would have been a pretty boring video to be honest Thanks to our patrons, Marie and I are very, very appreciative of all the funds and support you guys give. I also have to at the same time give a shout out to all of you that are sending money every now and again to my PayPal account because you guys aren't really getting any of the rewards that uh, the patrons are getting. Yeah, you still get to watch the videos and uh, I send every single person who supports on PayPal, I send a message and a thank you. Anyway, we will see you next week. Yeah, we're out on the oceans again. We're doing some uh, big remote island exploration for the next couple of months. So um, yeah, be a lot of sailing and a lot of cool stuff coming up. See you then.